The department store chain Meyer has performed a Lazarus-like recovery under the guidance of Chief Executive John King. But for King, it's not his first rodeo, having presided over a similar turnaround at the UK department store chain House of Fraser until it was taken over in 2015. Always in the background of King's work at Meyer has been its major shareholder, Solomon Liu, whose stake in the retailer has crept up to 26%. But now as Liu's holding is back in the black and the company is paying a dividend. I spoke with John King earlier this week. So in terms of the plan, what we did was after about 100 days, we collected all the information from around the company. We took a lot of feedback from customers. We took a lot of feedback from brand partners and suppliers who'd been with us, some of them for decades. And we come up with what we call the customer first plan, uh, which means, and the reason is it sounds simple, but it's not. But the customer first means that's everyone's default setting. So whatever you're doing, is this going to help me put the customer first? Now, we know we're not there yet, but we're vastly improved from where we were. But we're way down the journey now in terms of doing that. So there was five parts to that. Reduce space. Put the right stuff in the space, as in identify the brands people really want to have in the store drive online in terms of where it should be as a business. And we set ourselves initially a 500 million target. We've now since upscaled that, so let's get to a billion. Um, the next area was supply chain. So we had inefficient, inefficiency in the supply chain, too many suppliers going back up to factory level. So we reduced number of factories, and then we looked, wanted to have a modern distribution center we could use for online fulfillment and store replenishment. That will open in June, 200 robots, 100 people. Um, so we'll take you up there and show you what it's, what it's like. And then finally, cash and costs. So, OK, so then go to the online offering because Maya was renowned as being terribly slow in getting into that space. Yeah. But these days, I mean, from the last results, you've now got a significant access to your client base digitally that you never had before. And that surely has got to help in drive sales, drive specials, drive promotions that you want to do. Uh, well, absolutely. <clears throat> Excuse me. And behind, behind those five pillars we talked about was Mile One, yeah. which is where I think you were headed to. Yeah. So Mile One for us was um, a diamond in the rough. So it was data we had from customers that we knew liked the Mile One program. It was about 60-odd percent of our sales. And we just thought, hang on, why aren't we jo joining this up with online shopping and physical shopping. You know, the Maya One customer's worth 85% more than a non-Maya customer to us. So we've put some investment into that program. Um, and what we've seen is now nearly 75% of our sales go through the Maya One program. It gives us really important first party data in which to understand what you as a shopper want to buy, Ross, and we see what you're buying. And then we will then try and tailor our communication to you so that we, we keep you interested and engaged with us. So you'll come and shop with us rather than somebody else. OK, so your rival, David Jones, let's go there, because obviously there's been a sale there, it's at a significantly discounted price, but you also have picked up, uh, say, Ralph Lauren, Country Road. Some of the other brands that previously were inside that store have now come to Maya. Uh, why and how did you pick those brands? Well, we, we had Ralph, but albeit at a very small level, and a limited number of stores. So we've blown that out, as we have with a whole number of other brands, industry, Tommy Hilfiger, Rod and Gun, et cetera, in the beauty area, Chanel, Estee Lauder Group. So we have the footfall, we have the data. So we've now engaged with our brands where we share that data with them so they can understand their customer within Maya. Uh, Country Road Group was a long conversation that we've been having since they left in 19. Uh, we think it's a massive business potentially for them and for us, and it's right in our sweet spot of our customer. And when we had Country Road before they left in 19, 85% of their sales were My One customers. So we know already that we've got a willing and able customer base there waiting for those brands to turn up at Maya. Do you find some irony in the fact that you've now come through this sort of baptism of fire to a point at which your half-yearly profit has doubled and realise that there's a brick wall for consumer spending that's coming as a result of higher interest rates, higher energy prices and all yeah, that? Yeah, I wouldn't say it's a brick wall. Um, I'd, I'd say it's maybe uh, a fence that people can get through. Yeah. Um, so for us, it's, um, it's like, how do we mitigate against that? So customers are under pressure. So our points in my one are currency. And if we look at the last six months, 402,000 new customers, over 55% of them 18 to 34. Um, you know, younger generations, they understand, get on an app, find the free stuff, find the stuff that's going to give you value for money and use those points. We've announced a partnership program with Velocity, with American Express, 
with Combank. We... So there's American Express. That's one that used to be with your rival, David J. Yeah, slightly different. Yes. Uh, we're not doing a credit card with them, no. but we, you can use your points to spend with us. But if you've got you know a bunch of Velocity points or Combank points because you know, you've used your credit card, you can now come in and buy over 200,000 SKUs. Yes. Whereas you might not have enough points to get a flight with Virgin, but you can come in and buy a coffee machine or something like that with us. So, so but, tell me this. I mean, you've had a shareholder who's been highly vocal, and I know that shareholder's probably a lot calmer now that the share price, you've got you know, the business turned around. Back in the early days, were you worried about the banking covenants at Maya? Um Only in the sense that we had them. Yes. <laughs> but we knew there was a way through them. Right. And we knew that if we could get the business performing right, get, strengthen the balance sheet more importantly. And if you look at our balance sheet today, it's as robust as any retailer in yes. Australia, I think, uh, you know, well, degrees of. So for us, it was a, fo a cash and cost focus that we had, really helped us strengthen the balance sheet, give the banks some um, security that, you know, they're OK, these guys know what they're doing. And we have a great team of people. It's not, although I'm the one sitting here, it's not about me. It's about a great team of people that we have across the country. There's 10,000 fantastic team members that work for this beautiful, loyal brand that we have. John King, great to chat to you here on the program today. Many thanks for your time. Thanks very much, Ross.